Okay, so I'm gloved up and ready to go. Um, before we start, just one more thing. You might see there are two glass plates in front of me. And you might be or might not be wondering what that is. So on this one on the right, I only ever grind and prepare the white paint. On the other side, I use all the other colours. And it's the same, so I have a different, these are called a, this is a muller. So I have a different one for the colours and a different one for the white. And when I finish, I'll make sure I clean the plate or I clean this one as well. And actually before I start each time as well, I always check and just give the thing a quick wipe down with a little bit of um, turpentine just to make sure there's no residue of other colours. You know, some of these um, jars of pigment are actually quite expensive. So this little thing is about £25. And so you don't want to waste the, the colour by having it muddied by other ones that you might have forgotten to, to clean off before. So you can see the first thing I've done here is to make a neat pile of the pigment and a small hole in the centre of it, a little bit like a kind of a volcano. And then into that I pour a small amount of the oil and then mix it all together or begin mixing it together carefully with the palette knife. And so now using the muller I'm helping to bind the oil and the pigment together and going backwards and forwards several times. And the more you do this, the, the looser the, the pigment becomes. And you can see now at the very end, as I, um, as I finish the, the mulling, the grinding, um, with the palette knife, I'm just lifting up and um, checking the, the length of the pigment. By, by that I mean you can see it has this kind of wonderfully stringy quality. So as I lift the palette knife, the paint will come with it for several inches before it collapses back down. And that allows um, what are called, um, artists to get what are called impasto strokes. So that's strokes where the, the brush itself leaves ridges in the paint and therefore light catching the painting will um, behave differently than if the surface was just completely flat and polished. And artists from artists like Titian, Rembrandt, Velasquez, Ribera um, were all really skillful at exploiting the, the three-dimensional qualities of paint and the way that um, it would catch the light in the painting in order to produce specific effects. And so the image you've got up on the screens now is a portrait by Van Dyck, um, done when he was about 21 years old, of, uh, of a sort of a patron of the arts, an art dealer in Antwerp called Cornelius van der Geest. It's in the National Gallery in London. And it shows lots of different ways that artists can use impasto. So perhaps the first thing you might notice is the very thick impasto on the, the forehead and the way that's applied in sort of swirls of paint. And then you've got the way that he's used the white on the collar and you're know, designing these shapes and dragging the paint um, to make that incredible variety of shapes on the on the rough collar. And then also much more precisely, these incredible little dots and glints in and around the eyes, even on the lower lip, but particularly the eyes. And you know, again, the way that the, the light um, catches this, whether it's the artificial light in the gallery or the natural light in the gallery. Um, and it um, it gives the, the highlights a particular dancing quality. When you get in really close to the painting, you can see they're not just um, symmetrical blobs, but they have a organic, um, a sculptural and an organic quality. And the way that the light interacts with that helps to give an even greater sense of life and vivacity to the portrait. 